he has come here to tell business to prepare for a no-deal Brexit. Why, Liam Fox? Well, we're not telling them to prepare for, we're telling them to prepare in case of. Uh, we uh, know that the law in the United Kingdom says that on the 29th of March, the European treaties will cease to apply to the UK. So the only way in which we can stop that happening is to come to an agreement. Now, we believe that we will be able to come to an agreement. I think that there's a growing view that we should find an accommodation between the UK and the EU to make that happen. But in order to ensure that we get continuity of trade, it's essential that our trading partners understand that no deal is still a possibility. It is pretty extraordinary, isn't it, that the Prime Minister has said, and I quote, it is overwhelmingly in the country's interests to avoid a no-deal Brexit. You come here on the international stage and you say to corporate leaders, we may be about to do something voluntarily, something that we, the government, could stop us doing, that we have judged is overwhelmingly not in our interests. Well, let's go back a stage. We are acting on instructions of the British people to leave the European Union. We enacted as a parliament Article 50. We produced the legislation that said, over the past two and a half years, that we would leave the European Union on the 29th of March unless we came to an agreement. Now, the point is that parliament can't come to an agreement as it stands on the mechanism for that leaving. Now, I happen to think that there's still plenty of room for parliament to do so. I think... Um, uh, the vote was very heavily defeated. A lot of those, the, a lot of Conservatives, the Democratic Unionists, who we rely on for our majority, were very uh, annoyed about the Irish backstop. Why? Because on the surface, both governments want the same thing. We both want to avoid a hard border in Ireland. The problem was that the mechanism of doing so had the risk of keeping Britain in a customs union against our will. So you believe, even though it's not at all visible at the moment, that there could be a formula... There could be a deal, it could be a form of words, if you like, between Britain and the EU and the Irish government as well, that would convince colleagues of yours, hardline Brexiteers, I don't say that in a disparaging way, but people who feel passionately about it, that they could and should vote for Theresa May's deal. Well, let me tell you, number one, um, the Prime Minister is completely understanding of the strength of feeling on this issue. And there is not a sinew she will not strain to get an agreement, which is why she's talking to a range of parliamentarians, those outside the Irish government, the EU, to see if there is a way through this where we can find we, uh, a means of reaching the objective by a different mechanism. Is there any hope that we'll see that before the Commons votes next Tuesday? I think I, I can't say for definite, and I think it's unlikely to see it that early, but it's important we put the work into trying to make it happen. But in effect, it, it would be a declaration, would it, from the Irish and the British government of things they've already said that they don't, both sides, want to see a hard border. Now, even if you could agree that, there's a difficulty, isn't it, which the European Commission said yesterday, it is very likely that there will be a hard border, and it is their rules, not Irish law, it is EU law, that is crucial in the decision about whether there's a hard border or not. And we can find ways of, of dealing with those issues. I think there are ways in terms of the technology we have, cooperation we could have, mutual recognition, a whole range of ways but in which me, we you, can deal you, with that. You, you and others like you have been saying this not just for months, for years we've heard that technology will do it. So just well, it, has to be, it has to be not just the UK. So it's, it's all very well for us wanting it, but we have to be able to persuade the Irish government, who, let's face it, are heading towards an election, that they would not in any way diminish the security of the Belfast, the Good Friday Agreement in doing so. That's what we want to find accommodation with them over. Let's go back to what you're telling businesses here in Davos. Just a few days ago, the Chancellor of the Exchequer, he's going to be here as well, we're going to be talking to him on Friday morning, said to business on a phone call the government would not put up any obstacles to Parliament voting to block a no deal. You're saying something very different. You're saying Parliament shouldn't block no deal and probably can't anyway. Well, I don't think it's possible to do it in the way that they suggest. Some of the amendments being spoken about where Parliament, um, the House of Commons, would take control over the initiation of legislation. Um, there's a real danger here, and it's a much bigger constitutional one. We have an arrangement in our country where the executive, i.e. the government of the day, puts forward the legislation, Parliament scrutinises it, Parliament amends it, Parliament can decide to pass it or not pass it. What is being suggested here is that the House of Commons both initiates the legislation and scrutinises it. 
um, which is a huge change to our constitution. And the danger here is you change our constitutional conventions for one reason, but it has huge consequences elsewhere. And in effect, in this motion, we're being asked to change it uh, without any real debate well, about the constitutional significance. Let's make it much simpler. Why doesn't the government, why doesn't the Prime Minister do something to avoid what she has said is overwhelmingly not in our interest? Change the law to block no deal. Because that is simply putting off a decision. There are many people who is would it like... worse? Let me put it to you this way. We've often heard this phrase about no deal is better than a bad deal. Do you think no deal is better than a delayed Brexit? Well, I think there are many who talk about delaying Brexit when what they really mean is not having Brexit at all. And I think the worst outcome in this political process would be for Parliament having given a guarantee to the voters that they would honour the result of the referendum to turn round and break that contract with the voters. The I, worst outcome. I think that is the worst. The do, worst outcome. The Prime Minister, I'm keep, going to keep quoting here if you don't mind, says it's overwhelmingly not in our interest to leave with no deal. But you're saying that there is these, these something are, worse than this, well, something that the former Chancellor has just described as Russian roulette. I think, I think you need to think about the political consequences as well as the short-term economic consequences. There's no doubt that leaving with a deal and minimising disruption both to the UK and our EU trading partners is in our best interest. But I think the most calamitous outcome would be for Parliament, having promised to uh, respect the result of the referendum, to turn round and say they wouldn't. That's I think very that interesting. Would, you, I you're think Liam Fox. You are saying to the voters, we will consciously, deliberately, knowingly make you worse off economically. You're not denying that that's the consequence of no deal. We'll do it, though, because two and a half years ago, that's what you told us we, you want to do. When did they say they wanted to leave with no deal? We want to have a deal. The government is no, no. doing everything... I'm asking you whether to, you could vote to avoid to get, no deal. To then. get a deal. You can't avoid, you can't avoid a no deal. So why did the Chancellor tell business leaders he could? Ultimately, ultimately... We have a duty to leave the European Union. We want to do it in a way that minimises disruption. But what you're actually asking is, um, is, is, is having no Brexit uh, a sustainable picture at all? I think that you would see... No, I'm asking sort of, for delay. There I are plenty of MPs see... backing that amendment who say we need the time to come to a sane and rational and decent deal. What's a few months... But here or there. They won't tell us what that deal is. And let's face it, there are those who want to delay Brexit indefinitely. I think the most dangerous thing for Britain, politically, is for Brexit to be denied to the British people when they were specifically promised it by the Parliament. I think it would open up a gulf of trust between Parliament and the people that might be difficult to repair and with unknowable consequences. I want to move on to the talks that you're having here about future trade. Just finally... Does the Prime Minister agree with you? Are you confident that if you have to, it's not what you want, it's not what you're working for, she will take Britain out of the EU without a deal? Well, that is what the the law says. And as I said... If and that's what she's told you. Because there was an argument about it in Cabinet yesterday. If Parliament, Some people want to rule it out, people like you don't. So whose side is she on? Is she on your side? The Prime Minister has made it very clear that we will leave the European Union on the 29th of March unless we can achieve a deal. And I think that should be putting pressure on everybody, on both sides, to ensure that we can do that. It's in Britain's interests, it's in Europe's interests. I want to ask you about the talks that you're having here. You're meeting a string of people here to try and arrange future trade agreements. There are 37 that you said you hoped to have in place by the day we left. How many are in place? Well, we've just uh, last Friday, we agreed the Australia Mutual Recognition Agreement. We signed that. I signed the New Zealand one on Monday. We hope to sign Chile sometime this week. Interesting. Um, they're not free trade deals, and, though, uh, are they? And, they're mutual recognition agreements. And we, yes, but they're all part of our trading okay. uh, so arrangements. There's they're, no they're free part, trade agreements. They're part of our continuity. Um, just confirm, said, is that no free trade agreements are in place? We have a ready initial, the Swiss Agreement. We will, so that will go on to signature. These will all come to the House of Commons. I'm That's seeing also my, a mutual I'm recognition seeing, agreement. No, it's, no, that's no, it's a trade not. It's a full okay, trade agreement. Me. So that will be um, one. And the same with uh, our Israeli colleagues, which I hope to be able to get agreement on later today. I'll be seeing my Malaysian, my Colombian, my Peruvian, Egyptian and others over the next few days. We have, we have one of the problems um, that we have there is that some of the countries say they don't believe that no deal is a possibility. So why should they put the work in preparing for no deal? My message to them is it is a real possibility. You need to prepare. Finally, I've added up. 
the amount of trade we do with all the countries you're meeting today, what proportion of the trade we do with them, South Korea, Hong Kong, Canada, Colombia, Israel, what proportion is it of the trade we do with the EU? Well, so the total proportion of all the countries with which the EU has no, those agreements is 11.1% of yeah. our trade. Um, and our total trade with the European Union is about 43% of our total so trade. The countries you're meeting today, it's about a tenth of the trade we do with the EU. Well, so why 11 percent is not a tenth of forty three. Why would any? Well, it, it, I can give you the figures if you like, but I won't do it now. It's eleven point one. Twenty three billion are the countries you're meeting today. Total exports to the UK. Total exports to the EU. Two hundred and seventy four billion. ONS figures. Why would you voluntarily leave the largest free trade arrangement in the world with no deal? We don't want to leave with no deal. We want there to be an agreement. Although, of course, technically. Uh, under the withdrawal agreement, we will leave and not be able to have a new free trade agreement with the European Union until after we've left. This has always been the sequencing that's been a problem for the UK. We would rather have had the two rolled together, but under the EU's rules, we cannot have a negotiation on a free trade agreement until we're outside the EU. Liam Fox, International Trade Secretary. Busy day for you in Davos. Thank you for joining us.